Alright folks, my name is Frame, and today we're going to be looking at everything to do with Arc Ascendant's new Gene Infusion System. A relatively simple way to further enhance and customise your tames. If you find this guide helpful, I do hope you'll consider dropping a like or subscribing, as it all really helps me out. But for now, let's get to it. So almost any creatures spawning after the release of Aberration will now come with a single genetic trait on it. This isn't retroactive, so if you're on an older server, you will probably have to do a purge, but from now on, this should just be a default aspect of fresh spawns. With the only exceptions to this system being creatures without a baby form, like the Phoenix or Golem, and servers where admins have simply chosen to disable the system altogether. There's approximately 50 possibilities for what these traits can be, with some being purely positive, others a bit more mixed, but all applicable creatures will spawn with these, and they come in three different tiers, with a 30% chance to spawn with a tier 2, and a 5% chance with tier 3. Now, unfortunately, while they will always be present and always be affecting your creatures, you can only actually make use of this system if you have the Bob's Tall Tales pack. As to do so, you will need a gene scanner. This is a late game item unlocked at level 86 and costs 10 electronics, 60 polymer, 40 metal ingots, 80 crystal and 10 black pearls. Now this gene scanner not only lets you locate creatures, more on that later, but more importantly, view, extract and apply your genetic traits. Okay, so we've found a creature with the trait that we want. In this case, a nice vampiric Carcanos. We've gone ahead and tamed it, because yes, it must be tamed. Wilds don't really appreciate you, you know, trying to, to mess with their genes. Now we just need to give it a, a quick stab with our old gene scanner. And on the left, we get a list of genes currently stored in the scanner. And on the right, we get a list of genes on the tame. Now, obviously, we've tamed this because we want that trait. So we're going to head and extract it. But do be careful and make sure you are absolutely sure before you click that button. Because traits can only be applied to infants of the same creature type. So once you remove the trait from your new tame, you won't be able to put it back if you change your mind. They also cannot be passed down through breeding either. The only exceptions to that being the Reaper and the Rhino Nether, due to their more unconventional taming methods. But if you're okay with this and you're sure you really want to take this trait away, then yes, just click that little transfer arrow and there you are, you've got your trait. You can go and put it on the infant of your choice. Tames can have up to five traits total and depending on which trait you're using, it can even have multiple of the same type. So now let's apply it by just doing the same process in reverse, really. We stab our baby, move the trait over onto that, and start creating our new super dino. If we change our mind at this stage, we can take it off again. Your juvenile creatures can be messed with, well, as much as you want, really. I mean, they're infants, what are they going to do? But you can give them traits, you can take them away, you can move them onto something else. But again, once it becomes an adult, you cannot give it any more. So make your choice, get your traits in there, and you're good to go. It's really quite a simple system. One that definitely encourages you to keep going out and looking for more tames very regularly. Now if you want to store your traits for later, such as if you found a, a nice trait but not a good level of that creature type, then every scanner can hold up to 10, or up to 200 can be stored in a dedicated gene storage structure, simply by interacting with it while holding the scanner, and again, hitting the transfer button. Worth noting for PvPers that this is also a possible method of acquisition for new traits, not just by taming, as you could both steal filled scanners from other players, or destroy their storage and then interact with the leftover bag while holding your own scanner. Anyhow, that's enough on how to use the traits. Let's have a look at what you can actually get, you know, the, the really important part. And we're going to use the angry trait as an example for you first. The angry gene provides creatures with a scaling damage boost as their health falls. With no boost at all, above 50% health, 
scaling up to a maximum effect once they reach 25 or below. In terms of numbers, a tier 1 will give you a max of 12.5% damage, a tier 2 will give you a maximum of 18.75% damage, and a tier 3 trait will give you a max of 25% damage. Up to two Angry Genes can be applied to a creature at once, so if you manage to find two tier 3s that will be of course 50% damage boost. And finally, as one of the more powerful ones, it is also given a, a little extra balancing factor. With anything below 200 drag weight receiving the full effect of this buff, above 200 will only receive 60% of it, and above 500, like say a Rex or a Giga, will only be getting 20% of this buff. And you can see the exact values for your team by pointing your scanner at it and holding down the extended HUD key. But now that we've explained how the whole system works, here is the rest of the gene list for you. And there we are, that's every single gene available. You can now go and start planning out your super mutant boss killers. We're not quite done just yet with the video though, as the gene scanner has another couple of handy functions that I really should let you know about while we're here. First being the tracker. Simply bring up the radio wheel and go to creature track scan like so, and we get a list of every species on the map. So. Pick one, like here we, you know, if we want a, a dodo, so we select that, the scanner does a little spin onto dodo mode, 
And now the traffic light arrows on the side will point me towards the nearest dodo it can find. And naturally there is a limitation to this in terms of level. If you somehow manage to get your hands on a scanner at level 1, it'll only be able to locate up to level 16 creatures for you. Whereas if on the other end of the scale you use it at level 105, it'll locate anything up to level 131. Not that you can actually select a specific level of course, so it may still only direct you to a level 5 when you try and use it. But it is after all designed to help you locate more creature traits, not just simply very good creatures. And after all, for the trait purposes, all you need is the right species. And then for our final function, we have the ability to check and extract embryos. This is a huge, huge quality of life feature that allows you to effectively treat gestation breeding in the same way you would an egg layer. Not only can you check the stats on pregnant creatures before the infant is born in much the same manner you used to with the, uh, the Genesis Incubator in Ark Survival Evolved, but if you give them a, a quick stab with your gene scanner again, you can actually extract the embryo and then place it into an embryo incubator, providing a 10% boost and letting you birth it whenever you're ready instead of just when the time is finished. Lastly, if you are a server admin who wants to keep everyone on a level playing field, or you're just simply not a fan of the system and want to play without it, you can place the following code into your config files to remove the gene tool engrams, or disable the trait system entirely with disable gene traits command line, or disable gene traits equals true in the game user settings.ini. But that, I think, covers everything I can tell you about the new genetic trait system. I hope this has been helpful to you. Thank you very, very, very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.